They lived by the sea and off the sea. And the dangers and the hard life gave a strength and cohesion to their sense of family, the inevitability of endurance. Krogh also painted younger members of the Gaiheath family, including this study of a mother plaiting her daughter's hair. Again, the glare of light. A reminder, too, that Krogh was a friend of a more famous Norwegian painter, Edvard Munch. And there's another artist who comes to mind with those intense blacks and contrasts of light and shade, the Frenchman Edouard Manet, whose work Krogh had seen in Paris. There's an echo of Manet here, too, in Krogh's study of the sleeping fisherman. Not the subject matter, that wouldn't have appealed to the sophisticated Frenchman, but in the colours, the boldness of that pink background. The touches of brilliant blue, contrasting with that same glistening black, and the bold sweeps of the brush. Krogh also had an eye for figures caught in a moment of action. This painting is called The Distress Signal, and how dramatically effective to have shown neither the fishing boat in distress, nor the chief coast guard, who at this very moment will be assessing the dangers which his young assistant is watching. Visitors to Skaan today may know little about this talented group who once settled here. Only their work survives, and these portraits in the room where they ate, drank, and argued passionately about the future of art. Yet, how quickly we feel we know them. The hearty German, Fritz Stoltenberg. The reserved Swedish painter, Oskar Björk. The charming lady in the straw bonnet is also one of the most gifted of them, Anna Anker, a native of Skaan. Facing the man she married, Mikael Anker, father figure among the painters here. And their collective host, Dane Brundum, who ran the hotel. He's given place of honor in the middle. Beyond him, a pretty lady called Marie, wife of the maestro among Skaan painters, Peter Kroyer. Then a lady who looks dressed for grander company than this, a Swedish artist, Anna Palm. Behind her, a more down-to-earth figure, Oda, whose husband is Christian Krogh. He kept his splendid whiskers. Krogh's battling life finally won him respectability back in Norway, but he never painted better than in his years among the fishermen of Skaan. Among the Scandinavian artists who gathered in the Danish fishing village of Skaan during the late 19th century, one man, Viggo Johansson, lived a rather separate and quiet life, as reflected in this, his best-known picture, of his wife arranging flowers. She is Marta, a native of Skaan. She's now 23, already with three children. A shy and jealous woman, by all accounts, with few friends, not many people like her. It's at her request that Johansson paints her, and one imagines at her request that he paint her self-effacingly, from behind, being quietly domestic. She's devoted to him, to her family, and to her home. This was a short distance away from the main artist's colony at Skaan, which suited Marta's temperament. Three furnished rooms, she wrote, with a delightful kitchen, everything charming, old-fashioned, perhaps a little run-down, but we are both delighted with it. His delight is in every brushstroke, the way the sharp northern light picks out the details of the kitchen, flowers and a white vase, the sheen of polished copper, 
The very old-fashionedness of the place seems to have reminded him of the Dutch old masters, with their love of quiet interiors and simple things. A copper pot, a lid, a herb chopper, a metal plate for a hot iron. And beneath the rafters, a plain blue cloth on which rests a wooden coffee mill and a glazed earthenware coffee pot. The woven basket tells us why Martha has chosen to be painted in this way. She's been out picking sea grasses and wildflowers, and these are what she's absorbed in arranging. So absorbed, she seems to be making a statement about the kind of values she holds, and how she wishes to be recorded through the brush of her adored husband, V. Johansson, Skeyen, 1884. Around the walls of the local inn are portraits of the other Skeyen painters, the formidable Christian Krog, a Norwegian, and his wife, Oda. An elegant Swedish artist, Anna Palm. Then the most celebrated of them, another Norwegian, Peter Kroya. And his wife, Marie. Occupying the center of the frieze, appropriately, is their patron and hotelier, Dane Brundum. His brother-in-law, Mikkel Anker. With his wife, Anna, also a fine painter, and Brundum's sister. The Swedish artist, Oskar Björk. A German, Fritz Stoltenberg. And a lady singer who enlivened the numerous studio parties in Skeyen, Beatrix Diederichsen. Another Norwegian, Eilif Petersen and Viggo Johansson himself. The famous dining room of the Brøndum Hotel was transferred in 1946 to the nearby Skeyen Museum, a lasting record of those days when the artists would meet here and bring much jollity, beer and argument to the sleepy fishing village. The idea that the artists should leave their mark in this way was Peter Croyer's, he had seen how French painters had done the same thing in the country inns around Paris, and France at this time set the standards of how artists should behave and paint. They were the sort of jovial occasions Martha Johansson preferred to avoid, and preferred her husband to avoid if possible. The divisiveness common to all art colonies finally drove the Johansons away from Skeyen in 1890. He was a painter in search of a kind of idyll. And he found it in the most simple, humble themes. The flagstones of his own kitchen. The way the daylight strikes the plaster wall. The stillness of things. The quiet self-absorption of Martha arranging flowers. It's a picture which celebrates ordinariness, very much in the mood of the Dutch interiors of de Hoog and Vermeer. Ordinariness made idyllic through the agency of light which picks out the details he loves. That graceful neck of his young wife, whose face is turned away from him. The touches of color in the flowers she's picked. And the basket she brought them in. Some of Johansson's loveliest paintings reflect his devotion to Marta. Here she is outside their cottage four years earlier newly married. Again, absorbed and still, reading. Photographs capture something of that steady, serious gaze. The love of simplicity shows itself in the rich blaze of sunlight on their cottage roof, warm as bread crust. Again, the heavy spots of white and color in the dark undergrowth. the way the sunlight catches the wicket fence. Or Marta's eyes. A full glow of light burnishes her skin. This time she's actually looking at him. She's 17 years old here. It's a perceptive portrait, honest, almost ruthless. The unsmiling gaze, the hard set of the mouth. She looks old for her years, already with a certain embattled expression in that face. 
It's not hard to see why people felt uneasy with her or why she remained aloof and disapproving while the artists let their hair down at the Brundum Hotel. She never did. Johansson loved her, yet it may be significant that his most effective study of her conceals that disapproving face, concentrating instead on the plain domesticity she felt at home with. It was the light, the landscape and the sea that drew Viggo Johansson to this northern outpost of Denmark. And a regular feature of those long sandy shores were the fishing boats drawn up along the beach. Most of the men in Skeyen were fishermen and the weather was not always as benign as this. Other artists chose to depict the fishermen as heroes dicing with death. But Johansson was uninterested in heroes. His painting called Dividing the Catch portrays them in the same gentle way that he portrayed his wife Marta, as figures who belong in a simple setting, doing the things they understand. The same unheroic atmosphere is captured in contemporary photographs, but then cameras at that time didn't go out in the storm. He drew with great subtlety and care, with the same heavy strokes he used when painting. This is a study of a blind man and local character, Christian. Johansson drew and painted him a number of times, invariably with his stick and clogs. But the dispassionate gentleness had a chill to it. An eye, a horrible eye. The paint itself is rich, just as it is with a blue and white plate on a red background and with red within, like fire. Wonderfully rich colors, but the camera plays tricks. Stand back. A lamb's head, like the head of John the Baptist. This was Johansson's contribution to the decor of the Brundum Hotel dining room. Maybe he was proud of his skill in painting it, and people were less squeamish then while they ate. Or was it a gesture of support of his severe wife's disapproval of the place? Spring sun, 